Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you a makeup collection tag video. So I came up with a bunch of questions for this tag. Hopefully it is a tag. If it's not, it's just going to be me talking about certain products in my collection, which is totally fine too. But I came up with a bunch of questions about different products in my collection, maybe products that are worth the hype, products that are affordable, products I regret buying, and I wanted to pick out one from each category and a bunch of different questions so you guys can get a better look into some of the products in my collection that I maybe never ever mention, and this way I can feature them um, through this video. So if you guys are interested in hearing my answers to the makeup collection tag and learning about it because I just made it up, then just keep on watching. Alright, so my first question for this tag is what is your latest purchase in your makeup collection? Um, and I bought a bunch of things like last weekend and I did feature them in my recent Get Ready With Me and I think that day that I went shopping, this is the last thing that I bought that day. <laughs> so this is the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer and this is actually the first time I have it in a full size. This has been like super hyped up for several years and you guys just saw me um, talk about it and use it in my last Get Ready With Me. And I'm really, really liking it. They just came out with a bunch of new shades. So I picked up one of the new shades. And I bought it partially because the shade is called Café con Leche. And I just wanted it because it was in Spanish. So I bought this shade. <laughs> um, I'm sure there were some other shades that worked for me too. But I specifically wanted it because of the name. And I'm actually surprised I never had a full size of this concealer. Because I always get the little mini ones from Sephora. Like at the checkout counter that are like, I think $12.00. And they're always the wrong shade and I would just purchase those because I couldn't commit to getting like more value for my money by getting a full size. But I'm actually really liking that and I'm really glad that I bought it because I needed a new concealer. I needed it to get out of my L'Oreal Pro Glow Concealer Rut even though I am so obsessed with that concealer. So the next question is what is the oldest product in your makeup collection? And so since I've started my channel, I did move across the country from North Carolina about a year and a half ago. So then I decluttered a ton of products that were pretty old, like old lip products. I do declutter fairly, not that much. I declutter enough, so I don't have like super, super old products in my collection. And I also only got into makeup about five or so years ago. I've always worn makeup, but I only really got into like YouTube makeup and like making it a bigger deal than just like spending five minutes a day putting it on um, in the past five years. So the oldest product in my collection is the Urban Decay Naked Basics Palette. I got this for Christmas 2013 from my mom. And I remember it was like such a big deal. I'm like, that's the only thing I want for Christmas. I know it's expensive. Like I had never been to a Sephora. I think I told you guys like until um, it was like 22 or 23. That wasn't like a thing growing up at all to get any makeup that cost more than like five dollars so this was like my first like expensive makeup product and look how used up and the reason this shade is super super used up is because when I got this I did not have any kind of bronzer or contour or anything like that so I would take my huge contour brush I had a contour brush for some reason maybe even a powder brush honestly I'm sure I took like a big fluffy <laughs> powder brush and I would go like this and I would contour my face like that with this powder because it's what I had. I took my highlighter brush into the Venus, probably pinched it up like this and put it on my cheeks and then everything else for eyeshadows. I actually set my under eyes with this shade Foxy. This palette, like I'm sure I made lipstick with it too. Like this palette was my life palette. This was the start to everything. I even remember um, and this is such a basic palette, like this is like the most boring palette probably in my whole collection. But I even remember spending hours on YouTube when I got it looking up tutorials of how to use this palette. That's how like excited I was about it even though it's like super super neutral, super basic. So that is my oldest product in my collection that is the first high-end product I ever had and I still get like so excited looking at it and just remembering how like fancy and sophisticated I felt using like those two eyeshadows over and over like the um Venus shade and then the transition shade and just using them every single day and using those shades like all over my face because 
that's what I had to work with and just having something that was from Urban Decay that was such a huge deal because like the Urban Decay Naked palettes when I started getting into makeup that was like the Furby of makeup that was such such a big deal and this palette was actually super hyped up at the time can you guys imagine if this got like so much hype right now like they don't make makeup like this that is super super hyped up anymore I mean you still get really really neutral palettes but like this was very much hyped up like an Anastasia palette um a couple years ago which is really interesting how much like makeup's evolved over the past couple years but anyways i have a lot to say about that palette it is the oldest product in my collection it has a lot of sentimental value and it, i feel like it just really like started a lot of things for me getting into um makeup and getting into youtube it just brings me back to that time so i get so excited about that one so the next question is what is the best splurge item in your collection and i've talked about this a ton it's the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer that is so huge and I just am so obsessed with this. This is my favorite bronzer in my collection. It was $49, I'm pretty sure. So this is the bronzer, it's huge, I love it. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of an egg or a pancake and it smells so good. Honestly, I go into my makeup collection anytime I'm stressed out and I just like, smell this bronzer <laughs> it reminds me of like superstar or something i just go in and smell the bronzer just to like calm my nerves and it just makes me happy and i just love it for that reason because i love i feel like scents can do a lot and like boosting your mood and stuff so that always makes me happy when there's like scented makeup that's why i love the Too Faced sweet peach palette um so that's part of why i really really love it but i also love the shade i love the packaging that's super convenient to travel with even though it is really big it's super super sleek i believe that they are re-releasing this bronzer so if you guys have been wanting it and they do re-release it definitely pick it up because I never thought I would buy a $49 bronzer. I thought that that would be something I would regret buying, but I definitely do not regret buying it. Like, I just am obsessed with this. On No Makeup Makeup Days, I use it as a transition shade for my eyeshadow. I just love this bronzer so much. So this one it makes me super, super happy. It was $49. I don't regret spending that money on it at all. So the next question is, what is the best affordable product in your collection? And just so I say something other than this, because you guys know how much I love this um, highlighter from e.l.f. I'm not going to add that because I literally mentioned it in the last like 300 videos. But I'm going to say that this eyeshadow from L'Oreal, the Infallible Paints, especially this one in Brass Knuckles. This one is so gorgeous. I wear it all the time. Oh my gosh. The formula, like when you feel it, it's so incredibly smooth and it's super pigmented. For a drugstore shadow just a shadow in general like what I'll do is use a high-end palette for the rest of my eyeshadow look and then go in with this shadow because this is such a better formula than a lot of shadows that I have in high-end palettes this is gorgeous if L'Oreal came out with a whole palette of this formula that would be amazing and I would pay high-end money if they ever did that I would be fine paying 40 50 bucks of like a 10 pan palette of this formula because it's so phenomenal i don't see people using these ever they're super underrated so i definitely wanted to let you guys know about the infallible paints i have a couple other shades i never really wear them because i have some cool tone shades and i don't really wear a lot of cool tones but this shade if you want like an all over lid color that you could like apply with your finger have it on and have it look really metallic and look good then definitely pick up this shadow in the shade brass knuckles if you like like coppery neutral looks you guys would love that shade and love that formula all right so i'm nervous to answer the next question which is what is the biggest product regret in your collection you guys are going to be pretty upset or shocked <laughs> when i tell you what my biggest regret is before i show you what that is I'm going to say it is not at all because of the formula or the product itself. It's how much money I spent on it um, for how much I use it. So it's mostly how much money I spent. This is the Hourglass palette that I got over the holidays that I shared in my Sephora VIB sale haul. I rarely wear this. You guys, like, it looks completely brand new because I've said before, with really expensive products like it took me a little while to warm up to this um when i get something new that's expensive i get nervous about using it i can't let myself use it on just like a regular basis like that's just how i've been my whole life i can't 
I feel like I need to honor the product and not, not let it go to waste to like just go to the grocery store. I always feel like I have to use it for like special events or special occasions or something. But then after a couple weeks, I start to like get over that and start using the product. It's been three months and I can't get over that feeling with this product because it was so expensive. Not only that, I don't find that the powders in here are worth $80, I guess I would say. Like, I don't find them to be any more spectacular than any other product in my collection. And there is nothing wrong with any of the products in here just for $80. Like, it just... It was a lot of money for something I could get in a different palette for $40 or something. So that is basically why I regret it, that it was so expensive and I can't bring myself to use it. Along with that, um, I don't get excited about using this palette as much as I do like some of my $40 palettes or even like $10 powders in my collection. I don't find that the products in here are like so life changing that it's worth $80. I wish that instead of getting this palette during the VIB sale, I had just gotten a full-size hourglass bronzer for like $50. Um, I think I would use that a whole lot more. Out of anything in here, I've used the bronzer the most. But with the setting powders and the illuminating powders, like I don't find them to do anything different to my face than any other high-end powder that costs half as much. So... I feel so bad saying that about this palette because I was so excited for it. And I think that's also why I regret it, that I was so excited for it and I was really hyping it up and then it ended up just being like a good expensive palette, like nothing that really changed my makeup game or made me really want to reach for it. So um, yeah, that would be my biggest regret because every time I look at it, I'm like, I could have gotten this, 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 and this for $80 how many pizzas I could buy for $80. Like that's how I feel when I look at it. So that's part of why I don't enjoy using it. But at the same time, I don't find the formula life-changing. So, oh, that's how I feel about that palette. I won't get another Hourglass palette, maybe. <laughs> um, but I'm still curious about getting the full-size products because I think I would just get a lot more use out of that. So the next question is, what is the most used product in your collection? You guys, this one is looking a little, like, it just looks gross. <laughs> so this is the Lorac Pro Contour Kit. When I open it, it is, yeah, that's what happened to it. Um, basically, I stepped on it a couple months ago. It was on the floor for some reason. I had dropped it, and within, like, the next minute, I crushed it. So that is why the top is broken. And then if you look inside at the powders, I actually used this today. That's how much I love this palette. And this is something I still get excited for. I've had for like three years and I get a lot more enjoyment using it than the Hourglass palette, even with it being this broken. So the light contour shade is my favorite contour powder in my collection. And I still, like I used it today to contour and it's up here in this beige highlighter shade that I can't use anymore. Um, I should probably do something about this. I should probably replace this. I'm determined to use the whole thing. I just love this palette so much. Definitely, if you guys want a contour kit, if you have not tried it, I just love the formula of this to the point where I like make a mess every time I use it and I still use it like three times a week at least after three years. So that is the most used, that is the most messy looking and thing that sh should just be replaced in my collection <laughs> because yeah, you guys know why you just saw that. But that is definitely the most used product in my collection. I wanted to do a palette and not something that um, is like a lipstick or something that I repurchased a lot because I think that's the next question. Yes. What is the most repurchased product in your collection? And I have a ton here to share with you guys. And I did do a video on this several months ago and I will probably do another one again in the future. But basically my most repurchased items are the things that I use every single day. So a brow pencil, either the Anastasia Brow Wiz or the Benefit Precisely My Brow. I've gone through a ton of both of these, like several of both of these. I go through them maybe like every other month. And I've been using both for years. Then we also have some mascaras, the Benefit Roller Lash. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite mascara under falsies because it separates your lashes so nicely. It gives you a curl and it holds a curl. So I've gone through 
maybe six at least of this i've used this for maybe three years now since like it came out um that's when i first purchased it and i always have one in my collection and then also the makeup forever excessive lash this is my favorite mascara for bottom lashes so these are definitely my go-to's now the lancome one i actually just repurchased two of those let me pull that out because that probably counts for this answer too. So this is the Lanco Monsieur Big Mascara. This is the best mascara if you're not wearing falsies and you want a falsies effect. I ran out of one and then I just repurchased two of them um, last week because I had a gift card and I just wanted to stock up. So mascaras for sure. The Physicians Formula Eyeliner Pen. I've gone through like 10 of these. I have like a bunch of them just all over the place because Especially whenever I do lashes, I like to hide the lash band with this eyeliner because it's super quick and easy. And this is also really great for wing liner. It's super easy to use. It's also really affordable. And then lastly, I need to get rid of these because I didn't even realize I still had all of this in my collection. And it's from Maybelline. So these are the Lasting Drama Eyeliners in the shade Glaze Toffee. That is the only shade that I use. It is what I keep on repurchasing and then I use it exactly to this size and then just keep it in my collection I have no idea why so I need to stop doing that um, and I obviously need a new one but I love that eyeliner so much it's a gel eyeliner I'm not wearing it today but it basically looks like this where it's like a shimmery brown eyeliner and that's why I love it because it's not harsh or matte it stays put it glides on it super easily and I've been using it for years it's one of my Holy Grail eyeliners. It's a dupe to me for the Stila eyeliner in the shade, I think it's Lionfish. Um, I used to use that a ton until I ran out of it and didn't want to spend $20 anymore. So definitely recommend that eyeliner from Maybelline clearly and I'm just gonna go repurchase a new one and get rid of those like little tiny ones. Alright, so the last question for this tag is what is the most underrated product in your makeup collection? And so I just went through a bunch of products that um, I never ever see anybody talk about and I actually talked about both of these. I picked out two products. I talk about them a lot. You guys see me use them every day. And um, so I still wanted to bring them up even though I use them every day and you guys see them a lot. But I never ever see anybody talk about them. And I think they both make a big difference in my makeup. So the first one, of course, is the Benefit Boying Concealer. So you guys know I use this every single day since the day I bought it about seven, eight months ago. So it lasts forever. I think it's like $25 or something. Um, I use this every single day to cancel out dark circles and that way I have the freedom to use a very lightweight concealer or a full coverage concealer if I want to but I can use whatever kind of coverage concealer I want to with this because it cancels out dark circles and that way I can just even out my complexion with whatever concealer I want. So that is why I absolutely love using this concealer and just using color correctors in general but specifically this one and it's also like the formula is just perfect to me um i was using the becca one before and i actually want to repurchase that because i feel like my under eyes are a little bit more dry lately and that one is something that has a little bit more of an oily consistency it's not i wouldn't say like super oily but it's definitely has a bit more of a creamy finish compared to this one this one's a little drier so if you have oily skin you would probably prefer this one for sure and I just love it because it acts as like a primer for my concealer and that way it like holds and grabs my concealer and like the coverage stays in place all day. So that is like just like a game changing product for me and I don't ever see anybody using it but me. And I just bought it so randomly. So that is something I think is super underrated. Then I would also say the e.l.f. Daily Defense Makeup Mist. So this is a setting spray I use basically every single day. I love this stuff so much. It smells like oranges. It has skincare benefits to it too. And this is also like a makeup game changer if you have like, um, if your makeup just looks heavy, cakey, or like super powdery, you can help to kind of diffuse it out and make it look more natural with this. And of course it is very similar to MAC Fix Plus, but this is a lot more affordable and then it also has skincare benefits to it. Also smells like oranges, so it wakes you up every time that you use it. So I like to apply it. Like if I'm just like sitting on my laptop working, I need to wake up and I've drank too much coffee that day like I probably will after filming this video I'm just gonna spray this on my face and it just kind of like revives me and also the scent just makes me happy puts me in a good mood 
and yeah I really really love it I love both of those products I think they're really underrated because I just never hear anybody else talking about them all right guys so that's everything for today's video I hope you enjoyed this makeup collection tag I will leave all the questions in my description box in case maybe you guys want to answer these questions or answer one of the questions in my comments I definitely want to know your answers to some of the questions so maybe answer your favorite question in the comments and I will link all the products that I mentioned in my description box as well I did a hair tutorial on my hair styled like this um, on my Instagram a while back. I'll leave that in my description box. And then I filmed my makeup for Instagram and that should probably be up on my Instagram in a little while. So definitely check that out as well. And if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you guys soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.